Zechariah 9, 9 is my text, if you want to turn to that, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly, riding upon an ass, and upon a colt of a full of an ass. Does that sound good to you, brothers and sisters? Just? He's, he's, the king cometh. This isn't any, this just isn't any king. This is the king of kings. And he's come, he's just. The, quest, the question I want to ask you this morning is, are you ready? I'm going to ask you that again later on, but are you ready? Are you ready? There are people that really believe that they are the point, that everything surrounds them, that everything is, is for their personal life. It's all about them. And what I want to proclaim to you today is that it's not about us. It's about our Father in heaven, and that he will and is glorified through his Son, Jesus Christ. There are people that really think that everything is set up to accommodate what they are doing in this present evil world. Like it's all about what they're doing in this present evil world. This world that's going to pass away. How could it really be about them? How can it really be about a world that's going to pass away? It can't be about a world that's passing. It's going to go. And it can't be about just us because it's not. It's about the Father. God is delivering his people out of this world. This world cannot be the point. Anyone that preaches a Jesus that makes this world the main point is preaching a false Jesus. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here in a moment. My prayer to the Lord as I prepared this sermon was that I would not stand up here to make anyone else the point but the Father in heaven. Because I have seen that this is what Jesus' point was when he came on earth. When the king came, everything that he did and said was all about the Father. My brothers and sisters, I want to say something right now. That takes a lot of pressure off of you, knowing that it's not about you anymore. Knowing that whatever you're going through, hey, it's not about me anyway. So I don't have to put the focus on me. It's about the Father in heaven. So I just, I'd like to relieve you of that pressure right now if, that, if you're under that pressure. I'd like to relieve you of any pressure that it puts the focus on you. Because this is a tactic of the devil. See? He's not for you. He's not for you at all. He's, he's coming that you may be destroyed. And anything and everything that he can do to put pressure on you, to take you away from your father. He, he's going to do it. And I'm going to show that this morning too. Galatians 1.4 says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God our Father. So we see this is what the point is. Is that we are to be delivered from this evil present world. So whatever, if anybody puts any focus on this world, well, we can, we can go to the scripture and see that this is not the point because we're going to be taken out of this world. Now, how is this going to be done? How can we do this? Only a king can do this. Amen. Jesus said that he was not of this world. John 18, 36 says, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. 
if my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would fight that I should not be delivered unto the Jews. But now you know that his kingdom is not of this world. Not of hence, he says. God's showing us here that if this world was the point, if you were the point, that Jesus would have no problem, no problem whatsoever, of staying here with us and making his kingdom set up here and making everything perfect right here. But that goes against everything that the Father is doing. And Jesus only did what the Father commanded. Jesus is making known that he is in control. Huh? When everything else seems like it's out of control, and you look around, and things seem like they're out of control, Jesus is letting you know that he is in control of the whole situation. He is the king, the king of kings. And nothing, nothing can come in his way. Nothing can stop him from what he is doing. We should just know that right off the bat. John 8, 23 says, And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, and I am from above. Ye are of this world. I am not of this world. He tells us this is, this is not his, the point of what he is doing. He's not of this world. There is no doubt that this world is going to pass away. So we want to be focused on what God is doing. Since we already know that the world is not going to be here, just in case you have any thoughts of staying here with it, you could just look at yourself in the mirror and see that you've grown older. From last year we had to renew to this year you've grown a little older. Uh, you could see that there's something going on here, just in case some of you don't know that we are going to be leaving this world. We're not going to continue on. Something's going to happen. What's going to happen here? John, 1 John 2.17 says, And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he, has, he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So this is for you, brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, while everything else is passing away, while the health is passing away, the earth is passing away, you're going to keep on going on in Christ Jesus. But we need a king to do this. We need a king that's able, that is capable of bringing us from here to there. The point is to be made, to be ready, that God be glorified. Huh? God's going to be glorified with you. He's going to be glorified by you abiding in Christ Jesus. We are in a present evil world. We are in an area where the devil is very, he's very successful at duping mankind. He is. He's done a very good job of, of getting people to see that although we, can, we have all the information, we have it all right before us, but he's very good at twisting things and blinding people to the point of now people are even can say that oh, I don't know if there is a God. I don't know. I don't really know if I believe. How could he say that with all the, the we have because the devil is a liar and deceiver. Because he's very good at what he does. So we need a king. No one will be able to stand alone before God's presence without Christ Jesus and be able to, to make it. There's no one. It doesn't matter. We get this picture of how people react in, in God's presence. And Exodus 19, 16 says, And it came to pass on the third day in the morning, and there were thunders and lightnings, and thick cloud came upon, upon the mount, and a voice of trumpet exceedingly loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. 
Uh, this is the way it is. Even the toughest of the toughest, they tremble in the presence of God. So we know that no one, it doesn't matter what they say or how tough they act or how well they look like they've got everything in control in this world. Without Christ Jesus, they're not going to be able to stand before their Father in heaven. They're not going to be able to do it. <clears throat> Time is counting down. Oh, we have a calendar. Every year it gets, goes up. 2006, 2007. God's got his own calendar. Counting down. Nobody knows that calendar but him. But we know he's got it. And there's going to come a time when everything that people say is going to stop. And only those who are in Christ Jesus are going to be ready. Only those who know the king are going to be ready. Soon, time will be up, and all those who are ready or not ready will tremble with great fear. Satan is doing all that he can to keep people from thinking about this up and coming day. If he could stop you from thinking about that, well, he's right off the bat, he's got you. Because there's all kinds of other things we could think about. But if he could stop you from thinking about this day that's coming and to be ready, well, he's, he's, he's got you. Apart from this world, Satan has no control. So he's got to keep you in this world. He's got to keep your mind set in this world. Because above, beyond this world, where Christ said it, there's no control. He has no control over you. So he, what he needs to do is to keep your mind centered on this world. Even though it's passing away, he's done a good job of keeping people fixed on this world. Whether it be job, a hobby, whatever, you just keep, the list just goes on and on. Whatever is attached to this world. If he could get you fixed on that, why, well, he's got you. He's got many tactics that he uses to keep people so busy thinking about this world and not thinking about God that being ready really isn't even an issue for people. They don't need, being ready, that's, they've got too many other things to think about. I, I heard someone say this one time when they came to our fellowship, and we, we, we have long meetings, and, and he said, maybe you people got nothing else better to do, but I got other things I got to get done. And our response to that is we really don't have anything else better to do. <laughs> this is the only thing we have to do is to get ready. Because that's all that Jesus is doing. That's all the Father is doing. He's investing everything into the salvation that we be made ready, that he is glorified, that he has taken us out of where we were without any hope to be with him. Nothing else is really important. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. So what else is important? What else do you have to be important to get ready for. There's nothing else important. That is why God's people are struggling now. How do you struggle? Do you have any struggles of your own personally? Huh? Have you ever been sick? Have you? Is there anyone among us have, have never been sick? Is there anyone among us never been sick? God's people have sorrow. Anyone here that's never had sorrow? Some level. We all have different levels. We have people that have, God's people have hurts and pains. All God's people have been through hurt and pains at different levels. Tears. Suffering. I could, I could, I could just go right now all, all afternoon about the tears and suffering that I've had, but I know you brothers and sisters have more that you could tell of, but this is just to show us that this is not where we belong. We have a place for us that's being prepared, a way why this world is going to come to an end and why everything that we see is going to come to an end. God's preparing a place for us. Amen. You see, if making us happy in this world was the point, this wouldn't be a problem for Jesus. Jesus had no problem for that, giving you 
all the riches that you need, health. We've seen Jesus showed himself capable of healing the sick, capable of, of healing the lame, capable. If that was the point, he would have stayed and kept on doing it. He would have made sure there was no sick. There were sick still. He even said there were going to be sick after I leave. He would make sure there was no sick when he left. But there were, there were sick. Jesus is working and reigning now in the midst of his enemies. He's preparing a people. It takes a king to get us from here to there. People first must see that they need help. First, they've got to see this. Satan will use all manner of tactics to keep people from believing or keep people believing that they are okay. No, I'm okay. I've talked to people like this. Well, I'm okay. You don't need to talk to me. I'm okay. I'm doing all right. I'm doing fine. This is a lie from the devil. The liar and deceiver who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He'll tell them things like God loves you just the way you are. Don't worry about it. God loves you. You don't need to change. That's like saying Jesus came for no reason. Why? Why would Jesus come if you didn't need to change? Why would Jesus come if we didn't need a savior? Why would the king come if we didn't need a king? We need a king. And his name is Jesus. They can live their life apart from God and still be accepted. This is a lie from the devil. He'll say, You sure you shall surely not die? Come on. Come on. God's not going to just destroy you. You're a good person. How can we make it without a king? He came to die that we may have eternal life, that we may be with our Father in heaven. This is a little, this, Genesis 3 1, we could see what the devil's doing here. He says, it says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast. Or others say crafty, cunning, shrewdest. He's very shrewd. Able to, to take the truth and just twist it. And make it, make it look as if it really wasn't what it is. Twist it. He says here, it says, He was, a, he was the shrewd of, shrewdest of all the beasts in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. She knew what God said. God was pretty straightforward with what he said. But still he came to her like this. People are doing this today. We know what God says. But the devil is a liar receiver. He hasn't changed the way his tactics are. Now he comes to us and says, You're not gonna really, God's not going to really condemn you. You can live your life apart from God. Really. You, can, you, don't have to, you don't have to go that far. You don't, have to be so, you don't have to go overboard about this whole thing. She says, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye shall die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. And she ate. It looked pleasing to her, and she took it. It was a piece of fruit, brothers and sisters. A piece of fruit took down all of mankind. All. Amen. Romans 5.12 says, Wherefore, as by one man sin, sin entered in, into the world, and death by sin, and, and by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So now all need hope. Now all need help. It doesn't, know, it doesn't matter what people think or say or do. We, we need a king. 
And this king is Jesus. Now God lays it out before all mankind what he is going to do. And there was nothing God's enemy could do about it. Remember what God said to the, in the beginning here. We see that God was, was going to show Jesus. It says in Genesis 3.15, uh, Brother uh, Jonathan's going to be talking about this more later on. It says, uh, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thee seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and it shall bruise, he, bruise his heel. Another version said, he will crush your head and will strike his heel. The Satan, right, right the bat, he's destroyed. God showed him he's done. He's going to destroy him. The death blow to Satan. But what I want to talk to you about here tonight, today is that that's not slowing him down. He is destroyed. He has no, he has no power, but he's doing everything he can and, and in this world, he does have power. But he's doing everything he can to stop God from being glorified. That's what I'm talking about. Now, Satan is doing everything that he can do. If Satan could stop you from being born again, he would have. See? No, he, he doesn't want you to have anything to do with God. Because he knows that if your eyes are on Christ Jesus, if you abide in Christ and he abides in you, no man can pluck you out. You, as long as you're in Christ Jesus. But do not be confused on this one fact, that the devil is more cunning than you. You will not stand up against the devil. You're not going to do it. You can't do it on your own. You're not strong enough. You're not smart enough. You're not crafty enough. Apart from Christ, the only right that we have is the right to die and to be separate from our God for eternity. I say that because there are many people today that say, well, I have my rights. I, I just... It's not fair. This isn't fair. I have my rights. Well, you don't have any right apart from Christ Jesus. Only in Christ Jesus do you have any right. You have the right to stand before your God in heaven and have the right to be clothed in Christ Jesus because of what Christ has done. Amen. Ephesians 2, 4 through uh, six says, but God is so rich in his mercy, and he loved us so very much that even while we were dead, a dead man can't do anything. Just in case somebody thinks that they're capable of overcoming the devil, before Christ came, you were dead, and you could do nothing. You were dead because of your sins. He gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. It's only by God's special favor that you have been saved. For he raised us from the dead along with Christ, and we are seated with him in heavenly realms. All because we are one with Christ Jesus. This is our king we're talking about. It took a king to do this. Romans 8, 3 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending out his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. It's not that the law was weak, it was that the flesh was weak. See, we couldn't do it. It was unable to fulfill the law. We were without hope. The law was teaching us that 
We could not do anything on our own, preparing us for Christ, teaching us. We need a king, a king of kings to bring salvation to us. Wherefore, this is Genesis 3.24, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. You can see where We were without Christ. We had no hope. We were without God. Just being a good person comes far short of what is required. Amen. If you're a good person and you've spent your life doing and working for others, all these things are good. I'm not saying they're not good. But it's not enough. It's not enough. We needed a king to bring us from here to there. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13 says, Wherefore, remember that ye being in times past Gentiles, you couldn't do nothing about that, in the flesh are, who are called uncircumcised by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands that at that time Ye were without Christ. See? Without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of the promise, having no hope. See, this is where the lie breaks down. When, it, when it, the devil goes out and says, Hey, you're okay. You're a good person. But apart from Christ Jesus, good, good wasn't good enough. Good was not, was not good enough. It says you're without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who were sometimes afar off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. When you're standing before God on judgment day, you want to have the king close to you. You want to be clinging to the king. You want to be in Christ Jesus when you stand before your father in heaven. You don't want to be far off. You want to be close to the king. Now, because the king has come bringing salvation, it is possible for us to get from here to there. Now we can rejoice. Now we can shout because the king has come. Now we can see what they're talking about when it says the king has come bringing salvation. He is just and having salvation, lowly. A lot had to happen for you, for the king to bring salvation. This was no easy thing. To, he had to leave where he was in heaven and come down as a man. Isaiah 53, 12 says, Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. This is what Christ has done for you. And he has been numbered with the transgressors. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgression. A lot had to be done for Jesus to bring salvation to you. And a lot is being done now to get you from here to there. It says here, he's interceding. He's interceding now for you. Jesus is now interceding. Christ is presently reigning now on your behalf. A lot of work is still being done. God the Father is in the center of all the glory. See? After what Christ has done and what Christ is doing, God's received, the Father's receiving the glory. Philippians 2, 7 through 11 says, But made himself of no reputation and took upon himself a form of a servant and was made in likeness of men 
And being found in the fashion of men, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. It says verse 11, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. See, that's the point. When I say we're not the point, that's the point. That God's receiving glory because of what Christ has done, because of what Christ is doing. Jesus was made perfect through sufferings. The king perfected the work of, the, of redemption by shedding his blood. And because of this, our captain is perfectly qualified. Doesn't that sound good? Would you like to go anywhere with a, a captain that wasn't qualified? You want to step on a ship going out in the middle of the ocean without a captain that knew what he was doing? Huh? A captain that didn't know where he was going? Didn't know how to get you out in the middle of nowhere and just left you? Does that sound good to you? Well, we have a king that's qualified. We have a captain that's qualified to the, be the mediator between God and man. He found his way to the crown by the cross. We should not think for a moment that we will never experience sufferings ourselves. <laughs> the king experienced sufferings. Who are we to think that we're any different? We are going to experience sufferings, but brother, it won't be for long. Just for, just for a period of time, then it's going to be all over. Then all, everything that you have put into staying focused on the king is going to pay off. And that you're going to be glorified before the Father. And God is going to be glorified because of you being in Christ Jesus. Jesus didn't leave his place in glory so that our lives here on this earth would be perfect. If he did, he would have been here still, working it out, making it perfect. But anyone who tells you it's perfect is a liar. I can tell you that firsthand. I've already experienced a little trouble in my time since I've been, from the time I was born to the time I was here. If that was the point, he would have stayed. Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. Remember John 18, 36? The king is bringing many sons to glory. And God is glorified through this. He is glorified through his, his son, Jesus Christ. Hebrews 10, 2, 10 says, For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons into glory, to make a captain of their salvation, perfect through suffering. Now, it, it may not be a, I don't know where you live or what environment that you live in, where are you coming from, and it may not look like many sons are coming, but they are. Huh? How, when, you, when you became a believer in Christ G Jesus, you have just stepped into a very large room. A very large room with many sons of glory. So now, though, brethren, we gotta, we've got to make it from here to there. I don't know what kind of sufferings that you are experiencing. I don't know. Everyone has their different sufferings, different levels. I don't know what they are. But I know, this is what I do know. I'm going to preach about what I do know. I do know that in Christ, you have a captain that is perfectly qualified to bring you through whatever trial that you have. He is perfectly qualified to bring you through the trial, to bring you from here to there. So, brother, rejoice. Amen. You can shout with joy, knowing that you have a captain that is qualified, that can take you. You, you're, you. you are weak and feeble in of yourself. You can't do it on your own, but you, you can rejoice in knowing that you do have a captain who is qualified. He is able to give you peace. This is something you need in, in times of trouble, peace. We know that Christ is able to give you peace. 
You need peace. He is the king, and he can give you peace. Philippians 4, 7 says, And peace, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Keep your hearts and minds. We need to be kept. And Jesus is well able to keep you. You you know this. You know that you're incapable. Every human being knows that it doesn't matter what facade they put in front of you. It doesn't matter how strong the act or how strong... You're not capable of doing this. Everybody knows this. If they haven't been so duped by the devil to the point of no return. But if, if not, you know that you can't do this on your own. And you know that you need a captain. So it is good, so good, to the precious believer to know that as they have a desire, and they, this is what they really want, this is what they really desire, they really want to be with their Father in heaven, but they know that they're, 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 not, they're not good enough. They can go to the king who can make them, who can give them repentance. The king can give you repentance. He can build you up and make you strong. And only those who are going to overcome will inherit the kingdom of God. The king is, he is able to make you strong enough. In Christ Jesus, you will overcome. He is capable of making you an overcomer in this present evil world. It doesn't matter what you're going through. He is able and capable of doing this for you. If this is what your desire really is, to please God, in the end, you will be with your Father in heaven. You will. There's nothing stopping that. It doesn't matter. Everything around you can crumble. Your, your health can deteriorate. Your finances could just fly away. You could be in prison writing a letter of encouragement. In prison, writing a letter of encouragement. Because Paul could do this. Because he knew what was up ahead. He knew that he had a king working on his behalf. He knew that in Christ Jesus that he was going to make it from here to there. That's why we really want to rejoice that we have a king, a king who is capable and able working on our behalf. This brings rejoicing to the believer. We have a king now working on our behalf, and when Jesus returns, He's going to come quickly. We're going to be made ready in Christ Jesus. And he's going to say, My reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Brethren, when the Lord Jesus returns, if you haven't already died yet and gone to the grave, when he returns, he's going to be coming quickly. He's going to be coming quickly, and the graves are going to be open, and all his people are going to be coming with him and going with him to the Father, and the Father is going to be glorified. So as you abide in Christ Jesus, have confidence because you have a king that's bringing you from here to there. Thank you, brother.